welcome to Camera Matters 2.0. Uh, we call this podcast Camera Matters because Camera Matters to God and to us. I'm Rob, I'm joined by Will and Hien, and welcome back. Uh, this podcast was uh, in action last year during COVID. Uh, we started it, but then we stopped. We're now rebooting it and with a new um, kind of edge towards it. We're going to look into a particular book uh, for this entire podcast. We're going to be looking at Tactics by Gregory Kukul. Uh, if you haven't heard of it before, uh, it's a great book. We've only just started reading it, and our plan is to keep reading through it and digest a lot of the principles there, so then we can apply it to sharing our Christian convictions with the people around us. So that's what we hope to do with it. Uh, we're going to uh, discuss a few chapters, one or two chapters uh, each episode. Uh, we prefer you to read the book with us so that you, you too can uh, engage with his thoughts. Uh, but if you don't get a chance to understand, uh, if you can't get to it, you can also get kind of the summarized version uh, in this podcast. So um, if, you, if you're part of our church, this is mainly for you. Uh, if you're not part of our church, welcome. Uh, we welcome you uh, having you with us. Uh, we hope that this will also be beneficial uh, for you because we all uh, want to share the gospel uh, with our neighbors, uh, our family and friends and those who don't know Jesus. Uh, so for those who are part of our church, uh, it's been... Um, uh, we are now in June. Uh, in May, we began a campaign called Let's Go to One in 21. We call it Let's Go 21. And the hope is that this, throughout this year, we'll be sharing the gospel to one person. Uh, if our whole church shares the gospel with one person, that's a really massive win. Uh, so this book is uh, particularly trying to help us to not only pray, but then to kind of go to that next step of how do we connect with people around us and then eventually, hopefully, preach the gospel to them. So this is that kind of middle, the emphasis is on the middle bit where we're trying to connect with people. Uh, so that's what this book is going to help us do. So um, I'm going to hand it over to Will to share a little bit more about that uh, and then why we're really keen and excited about this book. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, so we, we really want to uh, encourage uh, everyone in our congregation to be um, thinking about that one person who you want to see come to uh, faith and repentance in our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we thought, you know, let's go 21. In 2021, everyone prays for one person, um, and we've we've got about 20 something people that we've that have signed up to our um, prayer chain, and that's been really really refreshing for me, um, just to be praying every day for a different person in our congregation and the person they're seeking to connect with, and um, and now we're thinking about how do we actually when we connect with this particular person that you have in mind, um, you know the conversation can go anywhere, you can talk about lots of various different things. Uh, and I think it is our hope that it will land on uh, spiritual matters, matters of faith, matters of, of the Bible. And, and so uh, we really hope and pray that uh, you know, this podcast and reading through this book would help us um, in when we discuss uh, these things with people around us. Now, uh, you know, I'm sure we all had a, a story in mind or, or a, you know, a, a time where we had a chat with someone and spiritual things or matters of religion came up and um you know you might be you might be the person who's just always thinking about trying to listen about what they're talking about and then thinking to yourself what's my, what do i say next how do i counter what they're saying and, and then you're so busy your brain's running at ten thousand miles an hour and you're so busy thinking about that that you're not really actually listening um to what the other person's saying um you could be a person who's who's just so nervous that um when you talk about jesus you don't really know where to start um, you could be the person who um, is just too shy and doesn't really want to bring up matters of um, you know faith with people around you because you don't want to be um, seen as fundamental, uh, like a fundamentalist. Uh, so hopefully this book would encourage us to to give us a confidence um, to be able to uh, speak with confidence in any situation to anyone. Uh, Rob, do you have a story for us? Oh, uh, yeah, I can think back to just a few weekends ago, we were at a friend's birthday party. Uh, it was a, a full of non-Christians there. And uh, I was talking to someone there who um, I've known for a while now. Um, he uh, is open to the gospel. His mom uh, is a Christian. And we just got talking. I just thought, oh, it'd be nice to strike up a conversation. Um, we talked about each other's weeks, how we're going. I shared a bit about church and um you know, uh, my weekly commitments and how there's Bible studies. Um, we even got talking a little bit about um, yeah, his mom's uh, Christianity. But then it kind of got to a point where I just wasn't sure what to say next. 
uh, I was like, hmm, do I probe? Do I prod? Do I say, oh, would you be open to reading the Bible with me someday? Oh, what's your view about Jesus? Like, I didn't quite get to that point. I wasn't sure whether to push or to pull back. Um, I was going into it after having read this book with a mindset of, oh, I'm just going to keep building the relationship, treat it like a gardening moment. Uh, I'd rather play the long game rather than the seal the deal right there and then. But then I, I tend to reflect. I was thinking about it afterwards. Hmm, how could I have done that better? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, so I'm hoping this book will equip me for that, uh, just to kind of know when to push, when to pull back. How do I steer the conversation? Um, I was talking to uh, my wife and she was talking to someone um, at that same party and th their conversation went way deeper than ours actually. Like their conversation went into denominations. Uh, this girl happened to ask my wife about, um, oh, what? Are, why are there different denominations around? Like what's the difference between Anglicans and Protestants and Presbyterians and she just, and then my wife got to share and then she also, when we were chatting afterwards, uh, we're just wondering, oh, what do I say next? Where do I go from there? Do I steer them towards the Bible? Do I steer them towards Jesus, the gospel? Or do we just treat this as a once-off? Let's revisit it ne uh, next time. So for me, I'm excited about this book because I think there's always gaps in bridging an everyday conversation to a conversation about Jesus. Uh, you might be a master at it. I don't think I am. I would like to be better at that. Um, I was, oh, that's right. Yeah, in that conversation my wife had, it ended on, uh, this was the comment that she, uh, her, the friend that she was talking to made. God is whoever you make him out to be. That, that, that to me now, as I think about it, is an entry point into bringing it into a deeper space. But we were stumped. Like she was stumped. And as, as I think about that, I'm a bit stumped. Like, what do I do with that? Mm. How do I handle that? Do I probe? Um, do I say, is that true? <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, so I'm hoping that... Do you go, nah, man. Yeah. And then start start preaching at them about Jesus? Yeah, do I whip out my Bible on my yeah. phone and then just start preaching at them? Like, I don't, maybe that could work. I don't yeah. know. Uh, but yeah, I'm keen to hear what Greg, Gregory Kukul has to say about how do you handle a situation like that? Mm. Do you guys yeah. have Yeah, he had, like, what, 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 make, what do you hope to get out of, um, you know, through reading this book and our discussions on, on this? I think because... Um, uh, my um, evangelism or my, my conversation gospel conversation has been a little has been a little bit laxed um, for quite a long time now uh, so I think this book just helps me get back into that helps me um, uh, initiate or, or reminds me of good um, strategies or good uh, sentences to use or just why we're doing it and I think uh, when just reading a bit about the preface of this book it's a long game the, like, the long it's a long process like you don't have to always seal the deal you don't have to always oh. preach the gospel you know you're, you're in a you're, you're in a chain of people who mm. who shares a bit and the next person shares a bit until one day god works his grace on that person then that person accepts so whoever is the last in the link <laughs> mm. gets to share or seals the deal but i guess for for me i uh, hope to be the person who's one of the links that shares a bit. Yeah. And I think why, why do we want to be having gospel conversations with people? It's because Jesus commands us to go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey um, our Lord Jesus. Um, you know, we're, we're told that the harvest is plentiful. The workers are few, so let's go out in the harvest and, and share the good news of Jesus. Mm. If we have good news to share, why not share it? Why keep it to ourselves? Um, and so I think that's, that's a key... Uh, driving um, map focus of why we, we want to be doing this why do we want to be equipping ourselves with t different tools I see this as, a, as one of the tools in an evangelistic tool belt um, in order to be able to have these conversations with people mm. so I feel more equipped and comfortable mm. um, and and confident I think because uh, for me a lot of the times I feel like I might lack confidence in, in terms of um, you know talking to people and getting them to think deeply about certain things um, you know, I, I generally stay on the surface matter of things. We like to talk about different things on the surface, but once you dive deeper, the stakes are higher. You know, relationships are. You know that you could have, you can, you can make or break relationships. Um, and so for for me, it's like just building my confidence in this mm -hmm. and having a strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, so let, let's talk about what we expect as in our podcast. So I think what we're what we're aiming to do is just to give like a few of the key insights. 
um, of, of a couple of chapters at a time for each episode. And we want to clarify some of the points that Greg makes um, just to see whether we agree with it completely or we might disagree with some of the points that he makes. Um, and then just to kind of like have a discussion there amongst else, amongst each other. Um, you know, we want to be thinking about where yeah, is what he's talking about biblical? Um, does it match like our convictions? Um, you know, and, and kind of just kind of be gracious in seeing where he's coming from as well. And then we want to challenge each other to apply some of the principles that, that are raised in the book in our, in our day-to-day lives, you know, conversations that we might have. Mm-hmm. Um, and what a great opportunity is because we will be connecting with people. So why not use some of these tools this year, you know, this month when we meet with, with um, you know, the people that we want to connect with. Yeah. Mm. And I think uh, you don't have to agree with the principles, but you still can use it as a tool. <laughs> yeah, like, as I think about applying it, I think it'd be really cool if we were able to check in, uh, perhaps weekly, perhaps every two or three episodes. Hey, how did you go with the Colombo tactic? I have no idea what I just said, <laughs> but I know that the Colombo tactic is part of this book. Yep. I'd be really keen to hear, oh, yeah, and how did you go with using that tactic um, on the person you're trying to reach? Which instantly raises the stakes because we're, we're firm believers in leading by example. We want to also be personally evangelizing, mm. and uh, we hope that this book will help us uh, be growing as evangelists of the gospel. Mm. Um, I think there's some dangers when it comes to a book like this as well, which we just want to acknowledge from the front. Um, there is... There is a possibility that you could use this book to manipulate people, uh, to use these principles to persuade people to a certain view. Uh, so I think we got to be careful with, uh, just to, I guess, to be genuine with our motives here. Like our motives for loving people, uh, sorry, our motives for using this book is to love people with the gospel. Uh, it's a love for the lost. Uh, Apostle Paul mentions in 2 Corinthians 5, uh, it's the love of Christ which compels him uh, to share Jesus uh, with people. So that's just a question for us personally to just keep um, asking ourselves, you know, are we doing this out of love? Or are we actually trying to manipulate people uh, to a certain viewpoint? Um, we hope that it's out of love that we're trying to persuade people to, to love Jesus and to follow Jesus. Um, so that's the first thing. Uh, first thing to acknowledge, first danger is our motives uh, for using this. Not, not to manipulate people, but to genuinely you know, persuade people to the gospel. Because that's actually what Paul does in Acts 17. He goes to the synagogues and he persuades people that Jesus is the Christ. And that's what we want to be doing with this as part of the tool belt. Mm. The second thing is also, um, we might actually, we don't want to put this on a pedestal either. This isn't the Bible. Mm. Uh, God has shown us clearly in 1 Corinthians 1 to 4 that his method for saving people is preaching uh, the, the good news. Like it's God's word that will change and transform people. The Holy Spirit and the Holy Scriptures do the heavy lifting, uh, but it is still helpful to use this book because God has given us minds, he's given us reason and rational thought. We want to utilize those um, those things, that he's, those faculties that he's given us to be able to um, share the good news. With that in mind, we also got to be careful. Yes, look, at the end of the day, it's not about our eloquent wisdom or our words that will bring people into the kingdom. It's God and his work. But we're still called to play our part. Yeah, so God works in and through us. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Long story short. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so um, yeah, I think in in my my short reading of this book so far, um, I think there's three key insights that um, this book um, or principles that this book uh, promotes. It's the idea of gardening. Now, um, Rob, you know you mentioned gardening a few times, like in one of your sermons, you talked about, oh, this is a gardening moment. Yeah. Uh, so you've adopted that language. Why don't you share just quickly what 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 does he mean by gardening? Uh, so, um, I think he means by gardening, it's, you got to prepare the soil. If you're, if you're someone who likes to garden, you got to, I got to prepare my garden bed now. Uh, it's going to take a while. Got to, you know, dig it up. Got to remove the roots and the weeds, remove the stones. Got to, uh, lay the soil. And then eventually then I can dig a hole and plant my hedges. And then after that, I'll put, you know, some uh, wood chips and things on top. Look, either way, the point is there's a lot of work before the tree grows and the fruit grows and then you can pick the fruit. So it's just going to take a while until the harvest is ripe for the picking. Mm. In other words, it's going to take a while until you get to the point where you seal the deal with someone and ask them, do you want to follow Jesus? Will you trust and follow him? That happens here at church in our new to Jesus ministries where we share uh, Christianity explained. We read Mark's gospel with people. Mm. Uh, We've heard some of our members have read the Bible with non-Christians and they've come to faith. Mm. 
that that's the seal the deal moment of reading the Bible and calling for a response. I think all he's trying to say is there's a lot of gardening, a lot of pre-work, a lot of seasons until you get to that point. You may not be the only gardener. Uh, God has given us his people as a church and we all do a lot of gardening along the way mm. until you get a gifted evangelist or just an ordinary Christian who seals the deal and someone comes to faith. Mm. So it's kind of like uh, what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3, like how you know, he sowed the seed, Apollos watered, and God provided the growth. Um, there's a process in terms of growing uh, God's people and, and the process of harvesting. I think it's also kind of noting that there's a, there's a long-term um, thing as well. So like if you reflect on your own life story of coming to Christ, mm. it wasn't having that one conversation with one person might have been a series of conversations, might have been years and years of thinking and yeah. conversations. Um, someone might have shared the gospel with you earlier on in life, but you didn't think anything of it. Mm. Later, something happens in life, you, you remember it somehow, and then you want to investigate further, and then someone else talks to you. So I think it's an acknowledgement that, uh, an ob observation in the, in the regular Christian life is that it's a process. Mm. For some people, it might be like a, you might have a Apostle Paul moment, you know, mm where Jesus appears to you, blinding light, and then bam, you're a Christian. Mm. Others, well, most, most people, it's like a process. And I think this gar concept of gardening is recognizing that uh, the gospel work is a process that, that may take months, if not years. Mm. That's actually certainly been true for me. Uh, as I look back now, there were many, many different people who I had many different conversations with, not all of them about the Bible, some of them just about my own worldview, actually, mm. which I'm like, oh, fancy that, that's what this book is calling us to do, investigate, get the person to open up and talk about their own worldview. Mm. People were doing that to me, or whether they were doing it because of this book or not, I don't know. Uh, but that was happening. And that actually spanned a period of oh, like two, three, four, that was five years. Mm. Uh, that was a season of five years of you know being first hearing the gospel and then questioning worldview, living out you know this world's view, which in the end didn't work uh, for me personally. Mm. And then yeah, gardening, and then until we went to a, a conference where I heard the gospel preached and sealed the deal. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, yeah. The lights turned on. The lights turned on. Praise God. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's one of the one of the principles, gardening. The second one is um, asking questions. So I think um, one of the principles that Greg promotes is you want to be able to ask questions to understand um, the other person's point of view. Mm. And um, if, you're, if you're able to know what kind of questions to ask, um, to, to understand and listen better, um, then, then you would be able to understand them better, and then work out how do you what's the way in for the gospel. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's what I think. And then the last one is understanding resistance, because uh, you know people get defensive if you come up with a different worldview. Like you know, if someone pushes against me, I'll push back. Mm -hmm. um, generally, like that, that's that's what we automatically do. Mm -hmm. And so understanding where that's coming from, what's that about, and and then how to respond mm -hmm. um, when there is resistance. Um, yeah, so I think those are the three key insights that would kind of come back and play back as, as we go through the book. Mm. Um, yeah. Interesting, um, just one highlight to share with you. He, he says, tactics is literally the art of arranging. Uh, often a clever commander can gain an advantage over the superior strength or numbers of a larger force through deft tactical maneuvering. So in other words, picture this, you're the... Uh, this book is trying to help you to be more like that commander in a situation where you're trying to rearrange the conversation in such a way that you can kind of maneuver it. So then you can bridge the gap between where the conversation is now to eventually a faith conversation. So that's really cool. Uh, I'm hoping to yeah, learn from that uh, and yeah, put that into practice. Yeah. So um, I hope that would whet your appetites um, for reading the book. So, you know, our next episode, we'll be discussing chapters one and two um, of, of the book. And um, I think before we, we close off, um, I'd like to kind of ask you to apply, to, to consider something, to re reflect on something. We want to end on an application, um, most most episodes, if not all episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, so with this episode, let's, why don't we reflect on some of your conversations, right? And ask yourself what went well and what you could have done better if you had a bigger picture horizon. Uh, for example, um, you know, I had a conversation uh, in the workplace and, and the person, I just asked the person, you know, they, they asked me, oh, why, do you think, why are you thinking of doing ministry full time? Because it was kind of common knowledge um, when I was working in the tax office. 
And then I said, oh, you know, because I want to tell people about Jesus, you know, what do you think about the meaning of life is? And then that person just came back with like a philosophical, like, you know, that that sentence, what's the meaning of life doesn't make sense. <laughs> right. Sure. And then, and then from there, it's like, oh, you know, I, and then I, my, my first thought is I just wanted to go straight to Jesus and just go, nah, well, it's because Jesus says he's the way, the truth and the life, blah, 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 blah. But I was just stumped. I didn't know what to do. Right. But um, I think that also... Like I could have planted a seed, maybe, mm. um, if I had a longer term horizon on mine. But I just felt the pressure to go. I need to go straight to Jesus. How do I get there? I don't know how to. And then, the, then the opportunity kind of passed. Mm. Right. So, so hopefully we can do some reflection on on some of the conversations that you might have had recently mm. or in the past, and just think about yeah, you know what went well and what you could have done better. Mm. Just thinking aloud as well because we want to apply this to ourselves as well so mm. as i'm thinking out loud um yeah my, my neighbors know that i'm a minister they know that i'm a pastor when i shared that i was a pastor they had no idea what i was talking about they're like pastor like the pastor that you eat um i was like oh no no no, it's like a, a minister like someone who um you know teaches people the bible reads the bible with people but then i found that nine times out of ten i can't think from the top of my head an example where this actually went further I feel like nine times out of 10, it, the conversation just kind of ends there mm. and just kind of, mm. we just shift topic or it just dies. Yep. So I'm wondering how do I keep that going? How do, what do I do from there? Do I, what kind of question do I ask to get them to question mm. their worldview? What do I do from that point? Um, maybe it's just asking, oh, have you encountered any ministers before? Mm. Yeah. Have you, what do you think of ministers? Yeah. What do you think of ministers? Have you come across them? Um, have you, you know, read the bible for yourself before i don't know i've never actually tried doing that mm. maybe that's something i could try the next time yeah <laughs> have a conversation like that yeah yeah yep so that's that's some homework for you guys read the first two chapters yep i could read the two first two <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well uh we hope that um th that's been helpful uh that's just a kind of introduction to our podcast we intend to uh, have another at least or oh, how many 10 11 12 sorry i don't really know from the top of my head but maths th yeah <laughs> maths what is that <laughs> uh, maths is good for solving problems um which means i'm bad at solving problems but there's going to be many weeks uh, more of the tactics um, podcast uh, cabra matters because we're trying to help our people connect to our neighbors our community so that we can then share the gospel with them and so that's our hope uh, for going through this. Uh, we pray that you'll join us and, and that this will actually be beneficial for you, for our church. And if you're not from our church, we hope that this will just be beneficial for you in growing God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. So uh, how about we close in prayer? And I'd like to invite Hien uh, to lead us in prayer. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that uh, we have resources like this to, to reflect upon, to re and to invigorate our minds and to be starting thinking about how we can be uh, salt and light and in the process, part of the process of um, sharing uh, what it means to live as Christians with those around us. And just pray that uh, as we do, uh, that we will have great blessings and great um, advancement and results of, of uh, not in terms of conversion, but we love that as well, but in terms of uh, our efforts in being more um, out there and preaching your word and sharing our life with other people. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And we hope to see you next week.